हॅलो वेलकम टू एट अनदर व्हिडिओ ऑफ आचार्य ज्ञान अकॅडमी इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर व्हिडिओ वी आर गोईंग टू डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सन्नी कृष्ण हेतू सो बिफोर गोईंग टू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रॉपर वी नीड टू नो अबाउट सम ऑफ द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट विच वी आर गोईंग टू कॉन्क्रेटाइज दॅट इज वेन एव्हर वी आर गोईंग टू लर्न एनी ऑफ द आयुर्वेद इन्फॉर्मेशन सो इफ वी नो or if you know about the physics chemistry and biology and if you are blending those information with the fundamentals of ayurveda then the deepest understanding of ayurveda in concepts is possible so whenever if you are going into that particular blending so we have to practice the concept of minimalism so that means we need to go for the brainstorming session of one particular small topic that means or from that particular small topic we are going to understand from the point of rachana sharira from the point of kriya sharira from the point of rova nidana from the point of the dravya guna vigyana from the point of the rasha sarva shuddhi kalpana from the point of the agatha tantra from the point of the swastha vrutta from the point of the kaya chikitsa from the point of the shalya tantra shalakya tantra from the point of prasuti tantra kama arubhati etc so that means one particular small topic we are going to uh, learn from the multiple angles then deepest understanding is possible so whenever if you are going into that particular pattern first of all we need to know about the what actually happens in the body normally from each and every corner so what could be uh, in what way ayurveda fundamentals can we apply in learning about the normal functions of the body that is what we can say the kriya sharira when you know about the each and every corner of the kriya sharira then learning roga nidana is very very easy from each and every corner if you know about the concepts of roga nidana then learning kaya chikitsa is very very easy in other words to say so physiology altered physiology then restoring the altered physiology it is nothing but learning of the kriya sharira roga nidana and kaya chikitsa we can have a deep understanding whatever the other subjects are there they are supporting these uh, particular uh, subjects as such whenever we are learning the any of the concepts as such we need to know about the identifying a pattern is very very important so pattern means the repeatedly occurring observations for example if a person is consuming dadhi as such it is having the particular pattern that is the can the taking the dadhi the amount of the dadhi for example third 300 ml of dadhi and timing of the dadhi 300 ml of the dadhi is taken at night time and so it is associated with adding sugar or salt so that is the if a person is doing continuously for 10 or 12 days we can able to identify this is a actual pattern and we know from the fundamentals of ayurveda dadhi sevana may be responsible for the increase of pitta dosha or kapha dosha so that means the pattern modification should be to reduce the uh, pitta dosha or kapha dosha vishayan in the body that means immediately check the consumption of dadhi either it may be amla rasa ekta or it may be madura rasa ekta dadhi you have to check it then we have to follow a new pattern so that means consumption of hot water or warm water so this is what we can say the pattern identification which may be helpful in modifying the pattern in creating new pattern which is essential for restoring the health so whenever if you are learning ayurveda it has to be applied with the surroundings wherein most of the surroundings are actually being associated with principles of physics then uh, if we know about the principles of physics then learning ayurveda is very very easy whenever learning ayurveda we need to follow one particular mentor that means so you have to follow the person who is giving you the information continuously so that means we can able to identify what he is saying in the past what he is saying in the present and what he may say in the future so in that way the identification is easy 
nowadays when you think about the present day social media millions of the uh, people are giving you the informations related to any of this particular sub subject let us say ayurveda itself and if you try to learn the information told by all these people then you are keeping your legs in multiple boats that is very very dangerous because when you are keeping the legs in multiple boats we are not going in further we will fall on the place where we are landing on those boats itself that is the reason following one particular mentor is very very essential whenever if you are learning ayurveda information learn ayurveda information as ayurveda information learn western information as western information and try to blend these informations at multiple levels if you are doing that and if you are connecting in all those different steps with the ayurveda information western information then it may suggest we are moving in the right direction lastly whenever if you want to learn ayurveda so make it a learning like learning a new language when you are going to learn a new language then we are going to use the most frequently used words first and we are going to learn the meanings of those and we are going to apply in day to day practice then we are going to use the less frequently used word then less frequently used word then less frequently used word in that way we are going to learn the language in the same way we have to learn the uh, ayurveda language in that way also <coughs> now coming to the subject proper sannikrishta nidana <coughs> when you say about sannikrishta nidana it's one type of the nidana itself so when you say about the types as why so many types are being mentioned so the idea is to know the exact pathology that is happening in the body which particular pathological events are happening in the patient's body so that can be identified to predict the prognosis of the disease process so in other words sadhya sadhya of the disease process can be identified then to plan the line of treatment as such so which particular type of treatment either samshodana or samshamana or the bahya or abhyantara chikitsa etc that can be planned etc that can be identified to predict the prog progress of the treatment how far the person is able to what is say the respond to the treatment can be identified regarding the types of the nidana madhukosha says these are the several classifications of nidana as such four types of nidana sannikrishta viprakrishta vibhichari and pradhanika three types of the nidana asatmendriya artha sanyoga prajnaparada and parinama three types of the nidana dosha hetu vyadhi hetu and ubhaya hetu two types of the nidana utpadaka hetu and vyanjaka hetu two types of the nidana bahya hetu and abhyantara hetu the next classifications are related to abhyantara hetu so that is dosha and dushya so that is three types of the hetu urdhva adah tiryak three types of the hetu shakha koshtha marmasti sandhi three types of the hetu vriddhi sthana shaya then three types of the hetu chaya prakopa prashama two types of the hetu prakrita vaikrita two types of the hetu sama and nirama and one type of hetu that is ashaya pakarsha so like that this is about the description told in madhukosha commentary of madhava nidana the fifth shloka of first chapter coming into the subject proper that is the discussion of today that is sannikrishta hetu what actually sannikrishta hetu refers to the term sannikrishta hetu that is a term sannikrishta refers to a near to know about this particular meaning we need to know about the term viprakrishta also that is uh, viprakrishta means exactly opposite to the sannikrishta that is far away when you say about the for example if a person is uh, 
consuming ruksha bhojana so that means the term ruksha bhojana that is present outside the human body and that is comparatively present that is farther to the human body whereas sannikrishta means nearer to that that means present inside the human body so that means the term ruksha bhojana responsible for the vata dosha prakopa so here the vata dosha refers to the ones which are present inside the human body so that is sannikrishta hetu whereas ruksha bhojana that is adhi viprakrishta hetu so this can be also being termed as asanna karana this particular hetu is usually associated with achaya purvaka prakopa or otherwise una bhava as per charaka so here achaya purvaka prakopa refers to the vitiation of the dosha taking place without chaya avastha whereas chaya purvaka prakopa refers to the one which is vitiation of the dosha are taking place following chaya stage this is what we can say and regarding the sannikrishta hetu means what that is dosha adaya that means dosha vata dosha pitta dosha or kapha dosha so that means person is consuming ruksha bhojana so that is responsible for the vata dosha prakopa in the body so here the ruksha bhojana is considered as the what is it viprakrishta hetu whereas the vata dosha is considered to be sannikrishta hetu it is being said that in the ashtanga hridaya first chapter 8th shloka vayo ahu ratri bhuktanam tenta madhya adika akramat this is the same explanation is being given by madhava nidana madukosha commentary for sannikrishta hetu what actually so this particular uh, the shloka refers to that is the dosha prakopa is going to take place in different age groups in a day in the night and during the digestion of food so that means vata dosha prakopa is observed naturally in old age whereas pitta dosha prakopa is seen in middle age whereas kapha dosha prakopa is seen in childhood as far as day is concerned so vata dosha is dominant in end of the day whereas pitta dosha is dominant in mid the noon whereas kapha dosha dominant in early phase of the day whereas ratri or night time is concerned vata dosha is dominant in early or end stage of the night whereas pitta dosha is dominant in midnight whereas kapha dosha is dominant in early phase of the night time whereas the digestion of food when we take the example vata dosha dominant is dominant in the end stage of a digestion whereas pitta dosha is dominant in middle stage of the digestion whereas kapha dosha is dominant in early phase of the digestion in other words the vata dosha dominance can be observed in the pakvashaya whereas kapha dosha dominant is seen in amashaya whereas pitta dosha dominance is being seen in between amashaya and pakvashaya so let us look into the few examples to know about sannikrishta hetu as such when you say about it sannikrishta hetu so in terms of roga marga so that is the shitala ahara when you say about it so this is the one that is elementary canal that is going to get afflicted in case of shitala ahara sevana the same thing is possible in case of amla rasa ahara sevana so that is the one that is elementary canal is coming into picture so here the dosha dominance is observed in the shitala ahara sevana either it may be vata dosha or kapha dosha whereas amla rasa sevana so that is actually responsible for the increase of pitta dosha in the elementary canal or what we can say koshtha whereas shita vata sevana what actually shita vata sevana refers to so that means whenever a person is inhaling cold air 
for example in the month of january or otherwise in the ac room so shitala vata that means cold air is supposed to enter into the respiratory canal respiratory passages so that means there may be a possibility of increase of either vata dosha or kapha dosha depending upon the nature of the what is say that the uh, what is say the pathological e or the etiological factor entering into the body and pathological events are taking place in the human body so whereas atapa sevana so that means so the exposure to sunlight it is most commonly whole body we can able to observe the vitiation there in that particular sense pitta dosha vitiation is possible so that means so here the site of the uh, uh, the sannikrishta hetu vitiation in this particular location would be twacha or skin that is attributable to peripheral vasodilatation which may be responsible for the profuse sweating in that way the person may have dehydration because of dehydration the person may develop thirst etc or the hypovolemia etc so that is what we can say the increase of the atapa sevana thereby sannikrishayitu vishesha it could be pitta dosha so the take home messages that's all for today the take home messages from today's session it could be sannikrishayitu is considered to be a nearer cause to the human body when compared to the viprakrishta hetu which is considered to be present outside the human body or external etiological factors whereas the pathological events are concerned it is achaya purvaka prakopa or otherwise una bhava as per charaka is the nature of pathological event that can take place in sannikrishta nidana exposure depending upon the nature of etiological exposure sannikrishta hetu may show the symptoms that's all for today dear ana members what are the major key take takeaways from today's discussion mentioned below and what could be the next video would you like to have in the discussion in this particular channel mentioned below if you are truly liking this particular video then spread this video to the true ayurveda learners in maximum proportion so that we can make a huge movement out of this particular small message that's all for today thank you